Well, 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 what do we have here? Well, it's in fact this wireless mouse branded with a di type 2 diabetes medicine. And this Memorex TS-1000 spill-proof turbo keyboard. Which, as you can tell, is designed for Windows 95 and 98. They're very proud of that. We'll start first with the mouse, and basically inside the box is of course a mouse and such items. And if you're curious as to what this says, I'll read it to you. The 20th century brought him type 2 diabetes. The 21st gave him Avandia. Yes, Avandia. The future of type 2 diabetes therapy is now. And it doesn't actually talk about the mouse at all on the box, except for saying wireless mouse, which is a bit interesting. This is all just technical information on the on the medicine. Really, it's, this is it. This is all the description you get. My cousin actually found this at a college in like a, a free books area. Obviously, this isn't a book, but that's where he got it. And he sent it my way for Christmas. And yes, it is a wireless mouse that runs off of a PS2 connection. Ain't that funky. And it uses infrared as its wireless, so it's basically only line of sight. And it has your driver floppy, which probably won't be necessary, as it worked fine for me on Windows 2000 uh, without a driver. And I'm going to be trying on Windows XP now. And your user manual, still without any sort of branding. Well, any real branding. Obviously, a drug company isn't making mice. And all that, yada yada. That's not exciting. And also, these are probably the original batteries, as far as I can tell, of the good old Power brand with a, a logo that looks suspiciously familiar if if you've ever seen or used Brave Browser. If I can get this thing, dang thing to focus on the battery. Yeah, there you go. It's not quite it, but, you know. And I do believe that these are the official batteries because I don't know how vulnerable that is, but it does have a 2003 expiry date. That doesn't stop them from working. And yes, it is a ball mouse. A wireless ball mouse. Crazy stuff. Well, I do have the wireless mouse uh, attached and uh, hooked up. Uh, it looks like the previous owner may have stuck this to something, uh, but I'm just going to set it here. And obviously the previous owner didn't hold on to it for, for very long. And it's wired to my ThinkPad advanced docking station. and. I'll put the ThinkPad in now. Maybe, I don't know, turn the screen brightness up so you can see things. Okay. Let's see. Yep, the mouse is working straight away. And the mouse feels surprisingly fine. I mean, for a while the buttons were hard to press, but then I realized that this plastic here was uh, not seated properly. And I think it did lose the plastic front here. And something isn't totally right with the scroll wheel because it's it doesn't work very well. Sometimes when you scroll down, it'll scroll back up, which is a little strange. But uh, it does work fine, and you can scroll. You can notice that as I'm just scrolling this, which is horribly crippled because I don't have JavaScript enabled, but when I scroll down, you'll notice that it bumps back up sometimes. And same thing happens... Uh, on basically any page and any computer, so it's not, I don't believe it's a driver thing. But yeah, it doesn't feel nearly as bad as the golf mouse if you've seen that video. It's perfectly usable. Uh, you just gotta remember the limitations of line of sight because it's using infrared for its wirelessness. But yes, that is the overview of the diabetes mouse. And now, I suppose, we'll be moving on to this keyboard. 
which is not really... There we go. Now it's in frame. Hopefully I can close that without causing it to jump out of the dock. Okay. So, gotta undo the tab at the, per at the bottom, unlike somebody evidently didn't. And... Oh yeah, this was two ninety five at the first store, but I don't know why exactly, but I got it for a dollar ninety five. Um, and as you can see, it is brand new, unlike the mouse, which the box is really beaten up on the mouse. Um, it comes with a, I guess you'd call this a palm rest, and of course, obviously the keyboard, which. I suppose I should tell you about the turbo key. Wait, the turbo key, it's... I don't get it. It it says... Let's see, what, what does it officially say? Adjusting input speed. The input speed is adjusted by holding down the turbo key located below the enter key and pressing one of the following function keys, F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6, or F7. The speed adjusts in increments with F1 being the slowest and F1 being... The, and F7 being the fastest. Now, what a friend basically told me what this means is, uh, it changes the keyboard re repeat speed, but after this, after reading this, it doesn't really show you that. I mean, I guess really changing the repeat speed when you hold down a key is like the only logical thing that it could change, but I, I was always aware of that setting in Windows, I didn't know why you'd need it on an actual keyboard. And I guess while we're at it, before I throw this across the room, take a look at the bottom. If you want to read anything in detail, you can pause the video and do so now. And of course, there's over here as well. Hopefully that text is legible. We got English and French, although spillproof is not in French. A lot of this is not in French, but some of this is, is in French. It's weird how how much larger some of the stuff is in French compared to other stuff that's in English. But, I don't know. And then the actually useful thing about this keyboard is it has a lock and unlock key, which is my understanding that basically when you press it, uh, it disables the keyboard so any other keys will not be input. Um, for example, if your cat comes and sits on your keyboard, you won't have uh, 20 million letters to delete in your Word document after he's done. And yes, as you may have saw, it is a PS2 keyboard, but it has AT, an AT adapter. Which, adapter with an O, is that, the, is that right? I, I don't know, but I think it's with an E. We'll see. To entice you to read the video description, I'll put whatever the correct adapter is in the video description. Anyway, on to the actual keyboard. I need to unplug the PS2 mouse. Set that aside. Because I could very well have brought the splitter out here, and that probably would have been a good idea in hindsight, but I did not. So that means that I only have one PS2 port. Because with all the stuff they put on the back of this giant docking station, they couldn't be bothered to have two PS2 ports. Now, the plastic does feel sort of cheap, but the key pressing that I've done so far actually is pretty nice. Um, yeah, it's responding to that, so... Ooh. Uh, <laughs> I almost went to sleep to, when I meant to hit the scroll lock key. That might get annoying. But, yeah, the, all the locks light up. Oh. Um, let's see. So key lock, theoretically, should... Oh, come on, stay up there. Come on. Oh, jeez. Okay, that's a very rigid cord. Uh, come on, why do you have to be so unlevel? Okay, there we go. So key lock, if we hit that... Yeah, you can see the num lock. You might be able to see the num lock light, not turning on and off it's very dim and you know so note to pad if we can find that yep 
And I hit that. Yep. Um, okay, so let's see, um... Let's see what the sleep button does, if that actually works. Also, maybe some of you know, maybe it's the French version of Alt, but I'm curious why this says Alt GR. Once again, if I figure it out by the time I upload this, I'll put it in the video description. But otherwise, you can uh, tell me what it is in the comments, but please actually read the description to verify that I have figured it out before you tell me what it is. Because if I already know what it is, I probably don't need 40,000 comments on it. But let's see about the turbo. So right now we hold down G, okay. So turbo and then F1 should be slower, right? Okay, yes. That is much slower. And then turbo F7 should be probably what we were at. Yeah, and that's the fastest. I'd assume it, the fastest it will go is uh, your keyboard refresh rate. Well, your keyboard repeat rate set by Windows, I mean. Um, obviously the refresh rate of the keyboard is going to be an inherent limitation always. Um, but also, I, I just noticed that it has a small backspace key, which that'll probably get annoying. But, eh. So far it does seem to have a nice typing feel. Let me try changing my typing position. Oh dear. Some of these errors are just me being stupid and some of the errors are like actually me not being used to the keyboard. What the heck did I just do? Oh, okay, light shot, okay. But uh, yeah, key lock works quite nice. Wow, that's a bit of a shaky shift key over there. Look at that. Apparently the key lock didn't last. See that? See how much it's shaking? Caps lock is too. Enter key seems surprisingly less susceptible to that. The numlock key is also shaking. That, that's sort of weird. It's like they skimped out on the keys they figured people would be pressing less. But I do like the keyboard. I may actually swap it out from, for what's on my main computer. Uh, however, I'm not going to give you a uh, demonstration of the spill-proofness because I'd rather not spill stuff on the keyboard if I don't have to. Uh, let's see if we can identify where the keyboard would actually drain from. Looks like these two little holes. So it's basically the way that a spill-proof laptop keyboard works, which this, I believe, the ThinkPad here is spill-proof. Let's see what's under this cover. Oh dear. That's... Oh. What the heck? You see that? That's a battery slot. Why on earth would they have a battery slot? I guess this must have also been used as a wireless version, so... I guess for me, it's just battery storage. Or, you could really even put a flash drive in there. Oh dear. Keyboard's activated. 
I mean, it's just a handy little storage compartment, I guess. Let's see, Memorex TS-1000, allegedly uh, UL certified, made in China. That's like the uh, model number, or part number or something, and then the serial number. Uh, do you suppose that they actually made 10 million keyboards, or this is just random? And then some sort of Chinese thing, uh, FCC and CE marks. But yeah, I guess this is sort of handy, although for a keyboard in well into the Windows 98 era, it's sort of strange to see a AT adapter come, but maybe they just had extra or something. One other thing worth noting is the presence of the Euro key. So that's interesting. But anyway, that's my review of the wireless diabetes mouse and the spill-proof MRX Turbo Keyboard. Thank you for watching. I hope you are having an excellent holiday season and expect a new video very shortly. Well, on top of this one, because you're already watching this one, so it obviously exists. Anyway, if you have a comment, feel free to leave one. And thank you. Uh, that's, that's having some problems. But thank you for watching.